toy. This commercial has no talking. It's just the boy backflipping, so people are just hearing black backflipping noises <laughs> while <laughs> the snake is drinking water. This <laughs> Well, there you, there you go. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to 2 v Released. <laughs> I'm Woki, and I'm here with Zedrot. Oh. And I'm at my actual computer, so that's why um, I was experimenting with something new, something different. And we're also back for some actual 2 v Released now. It's been, like, forever, but I also got stupid busy at work, and then you know how it goes. It's hard to record when you're like, I'm dying day to day. <laughs> Uh, but no, we're here today, and we're going to be talking about some good old Dokkan battle. Isn't that right, Zen? Everybody's favorite. That's right. Everyone's favorite. Absolute favorite. And speaking of absolute favorites, we're going to go right into it talking about, because we got two boys on the big boy scale. I'm putting them both together because they're both releasing at the same time, and they're kind of concurrent, so it makes sense. It's the dual Dokkan Fest for Super Saiyan 2 Goku and Super Saiyan 2 um, Vegeta. The Goku is Angel. I guess that's important because... Dokkan differentiates. Important because this fucking category sucks ass because of it. Yes, it does. All right, so let's start with uh, Angel Goku. His leader skill is Otherworld Warriors and Super Saiyan 3. Um, it's 170% to all for Otherworld Warriors because they need it, and then it's 150% for Super Saiyan 3s. And I would also argue Super Saiyan 3s also needed the 170%, but whatever. Um... His active skill is attack and defense 100%, plus an additional defense boost up to 60%. The more HP remaining, the greater the defense boost. Additional attack boost up to 60%, the less HP remaining, the greater the attack boost, plus an additional attack and defense 30% when performing a super attack. With three or more key spares obtained, transform when conditions are met, and his transformation is when facing one enemy and their HP is more than 80%, he turns into Super Saiyan 3 Goku Angel. Um... And his attack and defense is 120%, and then at 77% the defense boost, and it's 77% for the rest. Uh, the part that's different is that he has a high chance of evading enemy attacks, including super attacks, and plus 33%, plus an additional attack and defense, 33%. With three or more key spares obtained, attacks effective against all types with six or more key spares obtained. And his categories are Majin Buu Saga, Resurrected Warrior, Super Saiyan 3, Pure Saiyans, Transformation Boost, Goku's Family, Kamehameha, Otherworld Warriors, and Super Saiyan 2. Oh boy. Man. Don't like the paragraph long passives, by the way. <laughs> They're super annoying. Oh, yeah. It's really funny in global when you see one because you can actually read it and you understand just how fucking absurd the amount of text that's on the screen is. Yeah, it's it's insane to think about. Uh, but let's see. In terms of this card... Um... I mean, his animation's all right. I feel like there's been a definite, like, after Cooler. Some of the other ones have been kind of not as amazing. And especially as someone... I feel like for them to pick from this fight, I think they picked the two most safest super attacks they could have given them. I think only Super Saiyan... Yeah. I think only Super Saiyan 3 Goku has a pretty cool, like, face uh, close-up shot, which is really nice. And I think that's my favorite part of the animation. But when he's Super Saiyan 2, I just don't feel anything for it. It doesn't bring the... Uh, the fight to me like something like coolers did which was like two different stages of the fight literally turned into his uh, super attack um yeah and also his this is something weird i don't know um if you feel the same way but when he transforms into super saiyan 3 goku don't you kind of want the screaming yeah kind of, well because it's the only cool thing super saiyan 3 ever did yes and I feel like us getting Super Saiyan 3 Goku, but then him not it not being voiced, I think is kind of a missed opportunity because that's the scene. It's the, literally the only good scene of Super Saiyan 3. Everything else is just Super Saiyan 3 getting clapped by whoever it's fighting at the time. Yes. <laughs> and uh, the only thing that would have made it better is that if it summoned Bobbity to talk shit while he's um, <laughs> transforming. If the whole transformation was the entire scene where he's like, this is a Super Saiyan. Yeah, like, Vomity shows up next to, like, the fucking, like, uh, like uh, the whatever shitty sprite you're fighting against. And he, like, narrates while uh, he's going for it. Like, the whoever's on the side of him takes the side of Majin Buu in, in that instance. <laughs> but yeah, the, the so the animations are, again, just kind of okay to good, depending on how you feel about it. I think... 
Apparently there's some people who really, really like the Super Saiyan 2 fight versus Majin Vegeta. Uh, in a way that's like... Fine, but... It, yeah, I think it's a good fight. It's just like, I've never fully... Um, I guess it's because it's the Majin Vegeta fight. It's the only fight he technically has that's not him yeah, getting... it's the only thing Majin Vegeta does other than killing himself. Yeah, exactly. Because the Majin Buu fight is not a fight. It's him standing up to uh, a fat child and getting fucking taken down. <laughs> getting his shit wrecked. Basically. Um, and also, these the leaders... Other World Warriors is maybe the weirdest one. Um, I eventually oh, it's had... so bad. It's so bad bad it also doesn't make any sense because so i got into not into a fight because i gave my two cents which is uh the way that the category is phrased i assume it's other world warriors that are from other world or live in it so that's why janemba's not in it because technically he just was born in it he didn't actually he doesn't actually come from other world he just kind of existed well, what it means it. is you have a halo that's what it means if you if you have a halo you're in the category yes and I feel that's also what Revived Warriors is. Well, Revived Warriors, I think, also includes people who came back to actually back to life. So oh. this is basically just a shitty Revived Warriors. Yeah. Um, this is great because this is now the second category, I think, where people go, why isn't Janemba in it? Uh, this one and also Revived Warriors because people forget. I also forget that because um, I always expect him to be in it. He wasn't revived. He was literally born in that movie. Um, yeah, he just, like, he didn't come back to life. He just started living. Yeah, everything about the origins of Janemba are, is weird. Is <laughs> Nothing about it makes much sense. But yeah, other Janemba wouldn't say this category anyway. Yeah, th this category, there's no really saving this category. This is borderline world tournament category in terms of just like, here's a bunch of dumb units we put together. Oh, what's fucked up is it doesn't even have um, LR Super Vegeta, even though Vegeta was dead at the time. Oh, yeah, that is weird. Huh. I guess they don't consider. I guess they don't consider him another world warrior. I, I don't know. Trying to make sense of the categories in Dokkan. Well, I guess it's because Goku wasn't dead at the time, but Vegeta was, so oh. they don't count as as fusing into a dead person. Whereas Gogeta was technically dead because he has a halo for some fucking reason. Yeah, yeah. That that kind of reason that AGL Super Vegeta, or Super Gogeta is not in it. Yeah, because they did not have a halo. They're, they're alive they're, when they do it. They need a halo. Um, and the fun thing is, is that I think one person, the one person I saw trying to be like, well, they could add more was Goresh. And the dudes, he was thinking like, they could add this. At a certain point, he was like, maybe Angel Deborah. And I was like, at that point, I'm like, you're reaching hard. <laughs> this is the hardest yeah, reach. <laughs> Angel Deborah. Hell it's yeah. like uh, the the two dudes who who are guarding the home for infinite losers, in which I would say I don't think they can they they fit into the category because they're not dead either. They, they don't have halos. They're just there. They just live there. Yeah, I don't think they even live there. I think they work there. Dead King Kai. That's <laughs> obviously what we want. Oh yeah, King Kai. Let's bring in King Kai. That was the one that I was like, okay, King Kai actually lives in. Um, other world and he's also dead that just so happens because of goku he also died at some point um <laughs> but yeah and then also his other category is super saiyan 3 which um super saiyan 3 is i think the saddest fall down of a category ever made because at yeah, it it's really good for a while there and then it's like oh yeah what happened here well the problem was is that we learned that there's actually a limited amount of super saiyan 3s in the game so making yeah, it turns out there's not that many no, and all the ones that do come from are from heroes, and therefore um, they only show up once every four or four months. So good luck trying to get them. And they don't have like fierce battle or anything on them. Nope. So they're all. Um, I mean, they're they're perfectly fine units. They're just not what the category really needs. And I want to say this Goku is also technically not what the category really needs. They need more. Um, they need more than just Super Saiyan three Goku's. Um, saving their ass, because I feel like that's half the category now, is <laughs> Super Saiyan 3 Gokus. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Uh, but yeah, that's that's this unit. And also, that the, the transformation is annoying. It's not the worst in the world, but it's just kind of like, it's dumb if you ever enter, like, 
a final phase of something and he hasn't transformed. If you're super unlucky for whatever reason, there's certain Dokkan festivals where he or, he'll just never transform. Unless you get a yeah. good transformation. Um, and if he doesn't transform, you don't even get a good animation, so who gives a shit about this character, basically? Yeah, basically. Uh, the thing you want from him is that uh, is that he's strong once he transforms, if you can get it. But, yeah, how do you feel about this guy? Zen, let's put him uh, on the big one scale. Three out of five, I think. I think that's a respectable... Um, he's a better he's a better subunit than he is a, a lead. Yeah, and... Uh, and nobody cares about sub. If you can't highlight a cool team, nobody cares about you. Just get out. Yeah, it's true. It's true. All right. I it's... want a cool ass new team, and if you can't give me that, then what are you here for? This is Dokkan. <laughs> exactly. This is Dokkan. Just give me the cool teams. Now let's move on to the other guy, um, which is funny because this is taking forever to load. But all I see is that in the um, URL it says "Spirit to blow everything." Um, away and i was really hoping it was just <laughs> the spirit to blow everything <laughs> super saiyan 2 vegeta He's... i will say this is probably the one time i like the vegeta more than the goku yes yeah, so let's get get into super him super saiyan 2 is kind of a fun category ish yeah, so he's the leader for Super Saiyan 2. He's 170%. He's also a sub-leader for Resurrected Warriors. Um, his passive skill is basically what Goku's, but with more um, boost towards defense. They're basically the same unit. And then when he transforms into Majin Vegeta, um, the difference is that when he gets Key Spears, he's type effective against all. And then when he gets six or more, he gets guard activation against all. Um against all units so if you get here uh, if you can get six key spears with him he ends up being extremely good defensively and if you can't then well congratulations you're about to get blown out of the sky but that's neither here nor there <laughs> about it uh and also his categories are resurrected warrior majin Buu saga pure saiyans vegeta's family worthy rivals and super saiyan 2 um i think kind of with his transformation that so the one video I saw about this, which was funny, because I was like, there's no way. I guess a lot of people were like, oh, they, they're going to do it again. They're going to do his final explosion. I was like, you, you you, can't do that. Literally every Majin Vegeta is that, is that super attack. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. It's... I understand the want of, like, um, this was specifically coming from Nano, and he eventually, like, came around to it. He's like, well, the reason I wanted it is because I wanted it in the new good style. <laughs> like, the up, basically, like, updating the animations. Um, oh yeah, so it's not the shitty one. Yeah, yeah, because it's old now, and at its time it was pretty cool. But nowadays, it's definitely shown its age. It's not as bad as like STR Broly's, which is very um, <laughs> like it was outdated. I think when he was released, but Global was too hyped, so they ignored it. Um, yeah, so this his transformation is also perfectly fine that actually does that's the bobby d cameo cameo you get <laughs> bobby d actually does show up for his and transform him uh <laughs> yeah that'd be fine yeah that's it's really good other than that um i do like resurrected warriors a whole bunch i think this is actually funny where i think we both kind of like this vegeta a little bit more for different reasons so you like super saiyan 2 as a category and i also like um, I, I think super saiyan 2 is like a sneakily cool category because, like, it looks stupid on its face, mm -hmm. and you're like, why would I ever run this? But then, like, it has LR Kale and Khalifa. It has uh, LR Super Saiyan Gohan that transforms into Super Saiyan 2. Mm -hmm. It's got that really cool um, Super Saiyan 2 Bardock that I like a lot that nobody else likes, but I oh, like him a lot. Yeah, the, the, the one it's that looks like... the Goku. It, ha it has the purple Goku that is literally the other unit that we just talked about in it. Yeah. And it's got the the other LR Gohan, so you can double stack. Like you can actually get a lot of LRs on this team because yeah. LR Majin Vegeta is in it too. Yeah, LR Majin Vegeta is in it. I guess technically speaking, Majin Vegeta does count as a Super Saiyan too. I never actually thought about it. I thought of it as something like uh, Super Vegeta, where it's considered its own thing. But I guess technically speaking, um, he just has a big ass M on his forehead. It's no real change in power. Well, yeah, there is a power boost, but whatever. Um, yeah, it's a real fun category. If I had LR Kale and Khalifa, I would definitely want him more, but I don't, which is unfortunate. I do have the the intelligent um, Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, but it ends up being a perfectly fine category. But I really like Resurrected Warriors as a category because I think it has some of the weirdest like 
units you could put together. I think that also has like um it's also a lot of villains from what i remember it but it also has mashub in it <laughs> mashub is in resurrected warriors um bojack who else oh, this thing. About mashub. yeah point is is that you can run mashub with majin vegeta and that's a hilarious idea for a team in and in of itself other than that, I think his super attacks end up suffering the same thing as Super Saiyan 2 Goku, where they end up being fine, but it feels like there's definitely something missing. And it's also kind of... They kind of put themselves it's, in... Uh... Sorry, say it again. Is, is this Vegeta the first one that has 170% for all three stats? Um... I don't know. No, because Goku also has 170 percent. I thought it was always like okay. Okay, well, not not counting Goku. Uh, Piccolo has a shit grouping that has 170 percent for all three. I'm gonna say right now. I'm gonna double check it, but Piccolo has to have 170 percent for Namekians. There's like no way they would release him without a full ass boost for that. Namekians does suck. Yeah. I mean, for an actual valid category, I would say he's the first to get 170 (laughs) percent. I think that's fair to say. Um, Because most of the time they usually limit it because the category, I guess, in their mind is, like, too strong. Like, something like um, Majin Buu Saga. Um, Super Vegeta only gives 130% to attack instead of 170% because in their mind they're like, oh, we have too many good Majin Buu um, category uh, dudes in here. So we have to make it worse. That's how they, (laughs) that's how they do it in their mind. Okay, Piccolo 100% has 170% to Namekians from what I just looked at. So I'm going to click away from that. But yeah, I would say Majin Vegeta is the first to, in my mind, to give it to an actual valid category as opposed to a um, meme category, I'll say. Right, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, So how are you feeling about this particular boy? Uh, Four out of five three and a half to four out of five i'm not super into either one of them but i think the, the vegeta has like a sneaky cool team yeah that, that is fun yeah i think i'll go this a similar direction for you i think i'll go 3.5 if we want to we can meet in the the middle and say 3.7 because yours is a like a <laughs> question mark 3.5 or a four <laughs> so we'll meet in the middle and just say 3.7 for majin vegeta <laughs> that's fair I think this is the first time also for us in general where the Vegeta unit is actually the better for us. Because usually me and you lean yeah, it, Goku. Yeah, well, they just really gave that Goku nothing to nothing to work with. Yeah, the other World Warriors is a... They really should have given him Majin Buu. I saw people going like, ah, he didn't need Majin Buu. Like, fuck no, he needed Majin Buu. <laughs> we needed a category lead so I could use my AG, uh, AGL of... Uh, um, Super Vegito on uh, Majin Buu category without having to use Super Vegito because he's the fucking only lead for the goddamn category. Yeah, that really needs to change. That's so dumb that he's the only one. And I get that the category is big, but like, fuck. <laughs> he's not, like, you can't even really use the team anymore because he's so old. No. And here's the crazy thing. Resurrected Warriors, which Majin Vegeta has, and I'm fine with him having it, there's four fucking leaders for that team. Because Majub is the leader for Resurrected Warriors. He's a sub-lead. But LR, Broly, Intelligent Frieza, and uh, Majin Vegeta all are the leaders for (laughs) Resurrected Warriors. Jesus. It's like too many. <laughs> that's a, that's a real case of just like you I, as someone who runs Resurrected Warriors, I never have to worry about finding a leader for it because there's just so many. That's definitely too many. Yeah, way too many. Way too many. So yeah, there you go. At the end of it, Goku's a three and Majin Vegeta's a three point seven. And congrats to Vegeta for for the first time in what the three years we've been recording, he came out on top. <laughs> actually be the first time yeah it's the first time for everything if you don't count penta's fucking um i was gonna call it simping for super Saiyan for vegeta back in the day <laughs> <laughs> back when uh for vegeta simp <laughs> yeah back in the day for agl one <laughs> 
Oh god. I can control this sip. <laughs> Too much sip. Gotta give it up I for the. To, I need you to put that picture on the timeline now that just is the guy pointing and it just says simp. Just Drax. <laughs> for, for right here, right now? Pointing Drax and it says simp. All right, fine. I said I wasn't gonna, uh, <laughs> I wasn't gonna edit it, but I'm gonna put it in right here. I, I remember it is a twenty minutes. <laughs> All right, now let's get into some questions, some good old questions. We'll start with YouTube questions because there actually were some this time, um, and they waited a long ass time for it. So three weeks ago, damn, it has been a very long time. Um, let's see. First question comes in from Max Benus, who asks, who says. With the five-year anniversary around the corner, it got me thinking about future anniversaries. My question is, assuming that Dokkan made it to eight years, what do you think the visual will be, re will be representative of eight years? Like Super Saiyan 4 for four years. Personally, I hope it's other Gokus hold an eight-star Dragon Ball or has a single hand up with eight fingers on it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't uh, ask a, a good question with the name Max Venus. <laughs> Listen, I don't uh, try and disparage Max Venus here. He was the only one who put in a YouTube question. So we got to keep those uh, people feeling nice and good about themselves. Uh, here's All the right. thing. I have no idea what... I don't imagine that... So in my mind, Dokkan stops at 7. And it's specifically because there's no more um, things that they can put up for the 8 years <laughs> by that point. They can't put Goku up with um, eight fingers. It wouldn't make any sense. Or with like an eight-star Dragon Ball. Seven is the perfect end Say point. Say that, but they will. I guess it's, it could be him like hold. Oh, you know what it... Okay, you know, take it back. Here's what it is. It is um, for the eight years. It is Kid Goku and Kid Gohan. Kid Gohan has the four-star ball hat. And then Kid Goku is holding up the four-star ball. Eight years. Funny. How fucking funny would it be? if we got to the eight year anniversary and then uh they're like okay we don't have a picture for this so the game's shutting down there's no eight star <laughs> dragon ball so we're just done <laughs> and they just fucking ended everything oh that would be fantastic because then i would have to but they were they, but then they, they hit eight years and they're like all right now we gotta go to dokkan battle two and start with the one star ball <laughs> we're gonna have to start all over again nothing's carrying over by the way <laughs> we said nope thanks for playing idiots Yes. Also, before we go out, we will have one final banner because we want to get the last bit of <laughs> troops money out of him before we go to Dokkan Battle 2. <sighs> the last pull. The last everything. I don't know. I think if Dokkan makes it to eight years, that'll be amazing because could you imagine us still doing this when it's at the eight years? Eight years. God, that's a long ass time. Yeah. It is. We're at the five years, so basically from three years from now, is my math correct? Six, seven, eight. Yeah, so three years from now. Who knows Well, things will be different by then, you know. Um, we'll see. But there you go. That's that's my thing. If it makes it to eight years, it's Kid Goku and Kid Gohan holding up two four-star balls. What do you think? Oh, no, yours is the game is shutting down. <laughs> that is your they answer. The game. Yeah, they end the whole fucking thing. That's mine. I could respect that. <laughs> The one respectable move I could make for Dokkan is if they said, fuck it, we're giving up. No, the just other... Said, fuck this. Yeah, actually, the <laughs> other power play I would want Dokkan to do, and Global Dokkan should do this, they should give out rewards for Legends hitting number one. So... <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a fucking power move. It would be a, the ultimate power move. They also have to make sure to give the... Uh, when they hit L, uh, number one with, what was it, Kale and Khalifa? Was that who they hit number one with? Uh, no, it yeah, was for, yeah. No, it was Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken. That was the one they skipped over because they didn't. I guess they didn't expect them to hit number one, so they're like, "We don't have a graphic prepared for this, so we're just going to ignore it." <laughs> but I think that's the ultimate power play. Is that Dokkan says uh, Legends hit number one? We're giving everyone rewards to celebrate, <laughs> and <laughs> Legends just continues to like not pay attention to it. If they were, if they did that, and then they were like, "Yeah, for every Chrono Crystal you spent in Legends, we'll give you." Yes. Tickets to pull on this new banner, but only if we've detected that your device does not have Legends data on it. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. If only they would start we beefing with each other. Delete the game. Oh, that would be great. Dokkan's like the campaign of delete your Legends. <laughs> delete your Legends, your Legends account. account. 
<laughs> and we'll give you tickets for every Chrono Crystal you spent. It's like those things in America where it's like, give us your gun and we'll give you cash. <laughs> it's like, turn it in. And... <laughs> yeah, like, turn in your, you know, turn in your old game and we'll give you credit for your next game. It's just like that, but fucking Legends. Oh, I would love oh, it. Oh my god. I would do it in a heartbeat and then start Legends over again. <laughs> I think it'd be real funny. All right, let's go on to Twitter questions now. If you have a question, you have to be hopeful that I ask for questions on that day. Usually I do it Tuesdays, but because of my fucked up time schedule, I we're, we did this like yesterday. So uh, just look out for that. Follow me on Twitter, basically, is the way to do it. First question, we're going to need this picture. So there you go, Zen. My sister, Maths, um, at Yowie Mom S, rate this bird on the big boy scale. And this is the first acknowledgement that my sister watches the show because she said big boy scale, and you'd have to actually watch the show to know the it. Actual <laughs> and that's our bird, Sonic, uh, who has grown up in the one year we've had Sonic. Um, from a tiny guinea fowl all the way up to the borderline turkey look, which she doesn't like it when we call it uh, call Sonic a turkey, but... You have to admit the beak kind of looks turkeyish, yeah, no, right? That's definitely got a that's definitely got a turkey like quality to it. Yes. Um, uh, my favorite thing before, obviously, before we rate uh, Sonic on the big boy scale, I need to give some background on Sonic. Sonic is a guinea fowl. Um, Sonic also makes the loudest shrieking noises when she detects that my sister is at home and not next to her. And that includes the fact that she is outside all the way in a back in a special cage for herself. You can hear her calling from all the way to the room we, we uh, stay at in the house. This bird has powerful lungs. I've never seen a bird more angry to be like, acknowledge me now. <laughs> She also pecks at my sister a whole bunch, which is really funny, uh, to me at least. I think it's funny that the bird attacks her every time she goes inside the cage. Uh, so that's Sonic. Uh, how you feeling, Zen? Uh, I'm gonna go a solid 4.5. Definitely better than the two units that we just talked about. Today. Yeah, definitely. I would definitely rate um, Sonic over the, uh, the two units we just did. So I think I'll do 4.5 as well. Um... Fun fact, I used to be on Sonic Watch back when she was growing up and she was she started hang, hanging outside because she used to live inside the house and then eventually my uncle said, well, it's time for her to live outside and my sister was like, well, someone has to watch this bird <laughs> and I did it for the entirety of the night. So from, nice. uh, yeah, from 8 p.m. That sounds miserable. You'd think so, but she was like right outside my room so the light was on outside so I would just look and be like, is Sonic Okay. Sonic's okay. And then one time, I think I saw Sonic basically, like, fall over, and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I have to do something. <laughs> I better make, take care of this bird. But it was a very good bird, and I like doing it because, you know, I like animals. So it was all right in the end. <laughs> so, yeah, 4.5 for me as well. Very good bird. Um, can only grow. We'll see if, like, in another year when we rate the brand new Sonic, <laughs> the older Sonic, <laughs> how that goes. That is the old one. When her animations have been updated and all that. Uh, next question comes in from Shade, who asks, What's your favorite fright from your favorite anime? Um, this one's tough, because I don't think my favorite anime has a fight scene in it. Uh, your favorite conflict in your favorite anime? It counts. Mm, okay, yeah, that counts. Um, I'll say in Paranoia Agent, which is my favorite... Um, anime uh i think my favorite one is is that there's a very good so basically the entire series is built around this basically this villain called the um the bat boy i think is that the i think that was his name it's been a while since i've seen it so i'm not remembering his name it's basically this kid on roller skates who um when a char when a character's having a mental breakdown fucking whacks him in the back of the head with a baseball bat <laughs> And near the end of the series, one of the so every episode is like from the perspective of a specific character who ends up meeting the Bat Boy in some way. Um, usually, it's like a person who's like a teacher, and then they have like this secret life or something. And then the next episode, a character that was in their episode transitions to the next episode. And in the second to last episode, the final character has a confrontation with the Bat Boy, which is done in a way that's like. 
very well done because she basically figures out what Bat Boy is. Because the main problem is, is that nobody knows how um, this boy can basically be everywhere at one place. It's actually very weird that also everyone just, he comes out of nowhere and just like slaps you in the back of the head with a baseball bat. The police think it's just like a regular boy, but eventually they're like, it doesn't make sense because a regular boy couldn't be able to do this. So an old lady basically has a confrontation with this boy and it's done extremely well. And it's hard to explain because Paranoia Agent is very much a um, anime that requires you to, like it's visually told. So no matter how I could describe it, it's like, um... It's also a lot of build-up, too. So it's basically like 11 episodes of build-up for the main uh, villain to be taken down by this old woman, and it's fantastic. Um, so yeah, I think that's my favorite from specifically Paranoia Agent. So, what are you feeling, Zen? Yep. Quick and simple. All right, nice. Yeah, um, what you were saying again? Because I think I lost you from, to, to the internet. Oh, uh, Jotaro versus Dio. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would be it. <laughs> that, no you don't even... explanation needed. No, not really. If they know you, they should know. Yep. That's, all, that's all you need. Yes. Uh, thank you for the question, Shade. Next question comes in from Chase, who says, How were slash are the holidays? Uh, I'll go with you, then. It's that entire question. Oh, you missed that entire question? Chase yeah. asked, how were slash are your holidays? Okay. okay, I got how were slash are, and then you just... See your something. holidays. Oh, my holiday. It was very nice. Hmm. Oh, wait. I think someone's home from here. One moment. Do a quick pause. Okay, it's fine. I'm back. Um... So your holidays were very nice. Uh, mine were... were very nice. Yeah. Mine were pretty good, considering all things considered, right? Our Christmas is a bit weird because of the, our circumstances, but it was very... I got to hang out with family. We got I got to watch Togo with them, which was very nice, which was a Disney Plus movie about the dog whose light was stolen by Balto. It's fantastic, especially if you love dogs. It's about a very good boy. Um... Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Hung out with family, ate a whole bunch. My vegetarian, uh, my uncle and his friend are at vegetarian, but for Christmas, I guess after a year, they're like, well, these two boys only eat meat, so let's actually make some meat so that they can eat it. <laughs> so they made meat for us, which was very nice. And we had a good time. And I think... One moment. Whoop. Hello. Yeah. All right, we're back. Um... So yeah, my holidays were nice. Hang out, hanging out with family is always nice. And I also get a big-ass break from work, which is, sucks money-wise, but it's great uh, for my well-being. <laughs> it's nice for your, your sanity. Exactly. Um, Nighthawk asks, next question, uh, who are your top three or five favorite artists? Now I'm going to say that counts for anything. And because he just said artists and he didn't specify like song artist or whatever kind of artist, just favorite artist in general, story artist, stuff like that. Uh, let me see. A lot of my favorite artists end up being like my friends who I went to art school with. I really <laughs> like all their art. I think they're fantastic. Um, Jace from the Mew Mew Force and... Um, uh, uh, Captain Ginyu do fantastic art. If you've ever seen any of our drawful videos, it's if you look at their drawing and then look at mine, you have to remember we started art school at around the same time. So, <laughs> they all... <laughs> and it's uh, a shame how much better Jace draws than me, and also Captain Ginyu. Uh, he also did the fantastic covers for um, Day in a Life. He also did one fantastic one. Have you, I don't know if you saw it, the one where um, we were at an IHOP and he was telling me about the worst commission he ever drew. He drew one, cause he, at one because he's a, uh, he does commissions for people. One, someone asked him to do, um, like, what the hell is that art called when, like, you're being eaten by some vor? That's right, right? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Someone, yeah. Yeah, so he was talking about a commission that related to that. And um, I told him that the only way I would allow it to be uploaded is that if he drew a picture of a whooper being eaten by a surviper, and he totally did it in like the most fantastic detail. 
<laughs> Obviously, it's not actual Vork because it's just like um, the whooper like hanging above it. But it was like it's such a great art for me to just tell him, like you can only do it if you do this dumb thing. And then like a day later, he was like, "Here's this dumb thing," and I was like, "Well, shit." <laughs> I guess I'm I'm hoisted by my own petard on this one. Uh, so that was, those end up being my um, my favorite artists. And in terms of other stuff, um, the dude who did uh, Paprika and a, a bunch of anime movies, the also Paranoia Agent, uh, Satoshi Kon, I really love all his art stuff. It's a shame he died so young, but it is what it is. Uh, all the stuff that he made is fantastic. Tokyo Godfathers, Paranoia Agent, Millennium Actress, all of it is fantastic. Uh, and so there you go. That w- those are three. It's Satoshi Kon, Jace, and Captain Ginyu. <laughs> Good. Good. How about you, Zen? Uh, three favorite artists. I'll say um, Araki, Boichi, and uh use camarada why not all right perfectly fine perfectly good, choices. Makes it good. which one is use camarada do punch man and i shield 21 oh, okay that's his name i i love i shield 21 i did not know that i did not remember the artist's name um all right let's go on to the next question this one comes from thanos make me oh whoa are you willing to let me join in on your podcast? Um, I'll say just in general for us. Usually the answer is no, unless we call you. <laughs> the only person that has ever asked to join and then actually got to join was um, Ignit. And that's because he had been asking for years. <laughs> and he helped me out a whole bunch and he was allowed to come on. But for the most part, me and Zen keep it pretty tight knit for the most part. Uh, the only reason we don't have more people also is because a timing is a big pain in the ass. Do you remember how hard timing used to be when we had to have, like, when I used to ask, like, eight people, hey, can anyone join in? And we would have to do it. We would have a window of, like, 45 minutes where everyone was in the same place at the same time. Yes, and it was a clusterfuck of everything. <laughs> and it was, and they're a lot of fun, and I love, um, having all those different people on, but it's just really hard to get people together with the fact that, like, back when I had, like, all the time in the world to wake up and be like, oh yeah, I have a bed, and I can go to bed at any time and then wake up at any time, things were different, and now it's, uh, anyone who can kind of adapt to California time, so (laughs) D-free, for the most part. Pretty much. Yep, that's about it. Yeah, and, uh, of course, Ignat, um... Because he was super, I don't know if we have a similar time frame, but he was super excited to join us. So he was willing <laughs> to be like, when I say join this time, come in this time. And he was like, you bet, kitty picture. And I was like, all right, he's dedicated to the cause. <laughs> on it. <laughs> I'm fucking on it. Yep, yeah, fucking on it. So it's not that we're opposed to it. It's just that it ends up being that it's super hard to get people on. So it requires or a lot of more trouble than it ultimately. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's hard enough for me to get, for us to get together. <laughs> like, until 30 minutes ago, I was still at a Taco Bell, so. Yeah, it, it's a it's a mess. <laughs> it is. Thank you for the question, though. Uh, next question comes in from Positive Chan. He says, would you like to see this as an anime? I'm not going to do a whole lot of editing. It is just Ryuk and then Stalin is behind, no, it is Stalin writing in a death note and Ryuk is behind him? Basically, would you watch Stalin with a death note? <laughs> Watch Death Note, but it was Stalin instead of Light. Yes. Is that the question? Yes. Yeah, why not? All sure, right. Whatever. I'll go for it. Um, that guy hasn't done anything in what feels like years, so may as well. <laughs> what if he just did Death Note again? <laughs> but this time he doesn't do the shitty ending at the end. Stalin? Yeah. <laughs> Who would be Stalin's L? These are all questions that will have to be answered when the guy makes it, because we don't know enough about history to know 100% who would be his L. I, I guess I guess the L would be Hitler. Oh, but then no, because how are you going to make me feel for Hitler? I'm just saying that, you know, there's not a good guy in Stalin's situation. Be, yeah, you know what? To be fair, there is, there is no real good answer Maybe, to would this. Would it be JFK? Is that is that too real? <laughs> It was JFK. JFK was JFK like eight when <laughs> Stalin was alive. 
<laughs> I know, but I'm trying to think of presidents that die because he dies. That's the only uh, one that comes to my head. That'd be good. I mean, FDR eventually died of the polio, so maybe. Oh yeah, but. You know. Yeah, I know. I know what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see. We'll let him decide of it. Next question comes from Ktel, who says, "What do you plan on charging the guild like Zen?" Um, there's no Dokkan guild. <laughs> if Dokkan had guild, um, it'd be a different story. And I also, um, I, maybe I should charge because I think that I need money. If there's any, if there was any way for me to get money, uh, that'd be a fantastic way to do it. But then I would have to actually care about Dokkan on a daily basis. And I already have struggling times with legends. So with, with Dokkan at this point, I just treat it as like a disposable game. Like a new banner comes out and I'll just buy like an $8 account that has a trillion stones on it. And I'll pull until I get everything I want in the banners and then I'll just stop playing. And I'll just do it again when the new one comes out. Mm. I definitely have to take breaks in between stuff. Uh, obviously, the better I pull, the better, the more Dokkan videos I make. That's just like the the economy of the. <laughs> oh yeah, because that's all anyone gives a shit about in Dokkan is pulling. Yeah, I mean, um, whatever. People liked my uh, Bill and Ted Broly and Broly video, <laughs> where it was. <laughs> Just an excuse for me to constantly play excellent in the background over and over and over again. But yeah, um, uh, I don't know. If I would plan to charge, how much do you charge then? What's a good going rate? Obviously, I'm less than you, so whatever you're charging, I'd go half. Oh, I, I usually charge about $200 uh, a month hmm. per entry fee. And then if you don't get enough points, it gets doubled to $400 to stay in. All right, so I think I would do something like a hundred dollars and then two hundred. The point is, at one point, I don't want them to feel like, "Oh, uh, why should I be paying you for this much money? I could just go to Zen." <laughs> so I can't do like fifty dollars less. So you gotta, you gotta keep it. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah, I gotta lowball it so that way. Um, it's a similar problem of like, I think uh, for a while there was um, a, the PS3, the PS4 was fifty dollars less than Xbox One at launch, so it was like. Why would I bother buying the Xbox One? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. And it's like, yeah, that's exactly right. But if it was way less, it'd be a different story. Anyway, uh, there you go. $100 and then 200 if you're not active. For the Dokkan Guild coming whenever. Who knows? Whenever there's a Dokkan Guild. Whenever. Look out for that. Look out for it. Uh, next question comes in from Zaid, who says, Thoughts on Grand Cross? According to D-Free, it is the greatest gotcha game ever made in Mankind. So, I, I think trust he him. was kidding when he said that. No, I don't think so. I think he was being 100% truthful. I could feel the tears behind his eyes as he said it. <laughs> as he spent another uh, $60 on 2,000 Chrono Crystals. <laughs> and he said, if only things were better. Uh, uh, I haven't played fine. it. It's a good game. I I just I can't be asked to care about it because Seven Deadly Sins is so far down on my list of shit I care about. But like, it's cool. Hmm. I'm glad people like it. I'll probably try out the global version. I like Seven Deadly Sins. I specifically um, only seen season one of it, and apparently it was a good time to stop because <laughs> it only gets worse from there. Yeah, did you see that clip making the rounds on oh, Twitter? Oh, I saw that clip, <laughs> and that was pretty enough brutal. To as someone who Pretty really brutal. liked season one, I was like, ooh, <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> that's terrible. It was not pretty. No. No, it wasn't. So, um, I don't know. I'll give it a shot in global. I like gotchas that are um, friendly money-wise, I guess. And it's if if the rumors are true, the only other person I know that gives as much free multis as Dragalia is apparently Grand Cross, and that's good enough for me. Uh, more free multis in the world is a fantastic thing. <laughs> as long as the like, pulling the thing is good, that is, of course. Um, it's all about the economy of the actual gacha. But I'll try it when it comes to global. I just can't, like, start another Japanese gacha. I think the spell of the Japanese gacha has basically broken over me. I can't. I can't do it no more. I try. Um, that's been the hardest thing about I me mean, and... Um, or it's two is that the only one I can really play is pitter patter pop because words aren't necessary. Yes, exactly. Stuff like that, that's easy. But something like um, jump, jump Tyson is like literally, I feel like unplayable because I just don't know what anything is. And then seven hundred menus, and you just can't find anything. Uh, it's so yes, bad. it's like I don't. And then also like everything around it feels like 
really like if i knew japanese everything would be so much faster and then there's like unskippable story it's so <laughs> i'm like oh, dude unskippable cutscenes are like a special brand of evil yes i mean even literally even uh fake grand order that's built its entire thing over how good the story is lets you skip the story so even in something where i would say the whole point of even playing is for the story it lets you skip story beats the fact that fucking Jump Tyson doesn't let you skip in 2019 is absurd, especially for a gotcha yeah, game. We have unskippable story cutscenes in 2019 on a fucking crossover gotcha that nobody is playing for the fucking story. Yes, especially since I feel like they had one criticism for uh, or one which was like, I wish there was more story. And they're like, all oh, the story. And I was like, no, I don't think you understood. <laughs> <laughs> So there you go. That's our thoughts on Grand Cross. You think you you're saying it's good. You're glad people like it, and I'm saying I'm willing to give it a shot when it comes to uh, global. Um, that's our current thoughts on it. And then of course, as always, still stand by the fact that D Free thinks it's the greatest gotcha of all time and single uh, finest crafted gotcha game. Yes, uh, that's 100 percent true. If people can believe that you charge money for <laughs> gotcha money, we can make people believe that uh, D Free wasn't kidding. So many people actually believe that. It, like, hurt physically to read everyone being like, wow, really? That's kind of fucked up, man. Yeah, it was... <laughs> that really God, sucked. people are so dumb. They are very dumb. Um, it reminded me of, like, recently I went to... So the, the 17 uh, boat video recently hit, I think, 17 point K retweets or something. So I checked it out because it finally hit the 17 number. Um... And I was looking for some of the comments, and it's funny how many of the comments of people were, like, taking me seriously, as in, like, this is how I actually wanted Super to end. People were like, um, no, let me give you my paragraph-long explanation about the way Super ended. <laughs> and it's like, I didn't <laughs> care to hear your fucking yeah, opinion. I never cared at all about that. So, you know, sometimes people is just dumb. Just the way it is. Next question comes in from Teba, who says, Do you keep a copy of every video you've made or delete them after a while? I keep everything. The only things I don't keep are um, uh, specific things D Free asks me to edit that are not super hard to edit. So I'll get rid of those because I'm never going to need them again because now D Free has a copy of it. But for stuff that required like um, days of editing, I'll keep a copy just in case because I'm like, this was a lot of fucking work. I'm going to keep this on the side somewhere. Um, same thing goes for, uh, for example, I think. I did the same thing for some of your videos. The ones I, the only one I've kept is the Ape Escape one, just because that took forever to do. <laughs> it is a very good one. Fantastic video. Um, but otherwise than that, I keep everything. I think the only thing I don't have because I don't know where they are is original modcasts. But it's fine as long as that YouTube stays up. Uh, in theory, the, the original modcast will always survive in that uh, that place. Um, as long as that YouTube channel is getting nuked by Kappa. Exactly. As long as that doesn't happen, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't like deleting things. It's just been weird, especially things that are like um, the show, the start of something. Just because the way YouTube is, is like if my channel ever got taken down, then all those videos go with me. And that would suck. That would suck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to, to speak this specifically, um, the all the Twitch streams we did for Kingdom Hearts 2 are gone. The only thing that exists of that stream is the one highlight video I did. You know, and that's, that's it. it. Sucks. Ugh. So Blowjob City is gone. Um, Blowjob City got obliterated. No Fat Nicks got obliterated. Wonderwall, which was great when we came up with it. <laughs> that's gone oh, too. Man. I didn't know that there was a... If I had known that there was a time limit before Twitch auto-deleted, I would have uh, put it all on YouTube. Yeah, it's a damn shame. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's my basic thing of it, is I try and keep a copy of everything. What about you, Zen? I usually delete stuff unless it's, like, really, 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 really good stuff. So, like, nothing. But, hmm. so 99.9% .9 of the time, I delete stuff after I upload it, just for space reasons. Mm -hmm. All right. Makes sense. And this final question comes in from Felice Navid Rick. Who says, what will be the next global shaft? Um, I don't know. 
Because anything can be Global Shaft if you try hard enough. Uh, including stuff like... Um, for some reason, people took Kale and Khalifa as Global Shaft when it's like, no, they just added another... Like, did you actually expect them to go back in time? It's like, oh, we should have gotten it at the time. I'm like, motherfucker, they didn't think about it at the time. <laughs> All they thought about was that, like, Japan is coming up with this. Hit isn't enough because we saw the global numbers. So let's add another LR on top of it. That's about it. I would never consider that, like, global got shafted about they should have had Kale and Khalifa at the time. Because their deal was never Kale and Khalifa. Their deal was Hit. They voted for Hit. They got Hit. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. So, um, unless it's, like, top grossing again, I don't know. That's really the only thing I could see them ever giving a shit about. The only thing I think is should, they should give a shit about is whether or not they get stones. That's about it. If a banner has worse units in it, well, congratulations. The banner was still no, shitty. Man, you can you make anything a global shaft as long as you say, oh, we didn't get 300 stones for this. Oh, that's true. I hope the next one is literally like the New Year's comes in and... Um, How fucking funny would it be if they did the exact same thing that JP Dokkan did wrong? Like where they where JP Doga had to give the the three hundred stones, but instead they only gave two hundred. Oh, that'd be good because then it'd be the ultimate uh, storm of people who think two hundred is not enough, <laughs> and that would be insane to me. Any form of stones would be great. Um, what was that one thing? Do you remember the the rose banner where his he had like Super Saiyan three Broly was undokoned in the back, like he was his Dokkan awakened form, which was not accurate, so they yeah. refunded everyone's stones. They should do that, where they said, let's fix the artwork, but they don't refund anyone's stones. Only refund half the stones? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> here you go, half of them back. That's about it, man. Um, literally anything can be Global Shaft if you try hard enough. As long as you put the work in, anything can be a Global Shaft. That's that's just how it is. People were saying if um, the GoBros were not in the Tanabata banner under coins, that was going to be Global Shaft. And at that point, it's like, well... Yeah, I like how they were getting ready for it ahead of time. Yes. Yeah, Zahal with his like, stick was like, I'm ready for the end. It's like, I don't know. And meanwhile, we also didn't get GoBros in any of our banners, and I'm feeling like, man, I wanted to buy them with, with my fucking medals. So... <laughs> I'm bummed out that they're not in it. They should have snuck them into the Super Saiyan uh, 2 Goku banner. And I think someone else is coming in here. So that's all the questions we got for today. So let's end the show real quick so we can get working on Legends Roadwork, which is coming up right after this. Okay, Zen, are you ready? I'm ready. No promises that you'll hear me say it, but I'm ready. All right. Okay, kids, remember, um, consult your priest or rabbi if you're playing Dokkan, because if you do play Dokkan... You go to hell before you die. That's no good. Goodbye, everyone. That was basically perfect. Hit it in one. Excellent.